Yeah, he absolutely That's mash his play to some play. Is he going to get the one shot? He gets the one hit KO! Hey everybody, welcome to Pokemon Feet. Pokemon facts, easter eggs, and trivia. I'm going to try to teach you something you don't know about the Pokemon series. But if I fail, eh, whatever. Let's do it. Giovanni, Archie, Maxi, Cyrus, N, Lysander. All of the leaders of the villainous teams from the Pokemon series have been male so far. Well, except for one. Any guesses? Giovanni's mother, referred to only as Madam Boss, is thus far the only female leader of an organized evil team. Which, in case you didn't know, was Team Rocket. Yep, she was the boss of Team Rocket before Giovanni took over. Huh. On the topic of Team Rocket, in the dub version of Snow Way Out, a character is referred to as Jessie's mother appears, or at least her torso does, at some point in the episode. Yet, in the Japanese version, the character was not Jessie's mom at all. In fact, Jessie does indeed have a known mom in the series, whose name is Miyamoto. Maybe that's why the woman's torso from the dub episode doesn't resemble Miyamoto whatsoever. This next fact is more of a pattern, or should I say, lack of a pattern? Superior is the first fully evolved grass type starter Pokemon whose English name is not eight letters long. That's a pretty weird trend. We've talked about the Poker Rat before on Pokemon Feet, but I think it's time to revisit the catchy tune again. If you're old like me, you may remember that the original Kanto Poke Rap had several Pokemon names mispronounced throughout the song. These Pokemon were Pidgeot, Venusaur, and Growlithe. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can listen to it for yourself. Remember Cynthia and Cyrus from the Sinnoh region? Of course you do. Well, the names they were given actually have to do with one another. In English, the name Cynthia is an epithet, or a nickname, for the Greek goddess of the moon, Artemis, whereas the origin for the word Cyrus stems from the Persian word Kuros, which means sun. This naming parallel is derived from their Japanese names, however, with Cynthia's Japanese name referencing the color white, and Cyrus's the color red. I'm sure you could derive that symbolism on your own, though. Dun 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 Pokemon has a ton of great music, hence why there's a Pokemon Symphony traveling around America as we speak. But individual Pokemon didn't used to have their own unique battle music. That is, until Generation 3. The player's encounter with Deoxys was the first time a single Pokemon had a tune to itself. How special. Bruno's a cool dude. He's like an Elite Four member in Kanto and Johto or something. Too bad the guy never stands up. Every single sprite of Bruno in-game has shown him sitting down. What a bum. The calculation for critical hits in Generation 1 was pretty strange to say the least. It depended entirely on the speed of the Pokemon using a move. That being said, using the move Focus Energy or the battle item Dire Hit, which are supposed to increase the chance of your Pokemon scoring a critical hit in a match, ended up backfiring. Hard. If a Pokemon was faster than the opponent, then using either of these two methods would have absolutely zero effect whatsoever. And worse, if your Pokemon was slower than their opponent, Using Focus Energy or a Dire Hit would completely prevent your Pokemon from scoring critical hits anymore. That's a good use of a turn. Here I am, trying to trade a Pokemon to a friend when... BAM! Nope! Has an HM move. Can't do it. I can't tell you how many times this scenario has happened to me. And the only way to get rid of the move would be to take your Pokemon to the move deleter. God forbid you actually know where he is in the first place. But wait, that's not entirely true. 
the Pokemon Daycare can actually delete HM moves for newer learn moves as your Pokemon levels up. In fact, in the Daycare, if a Pokemon can learn a new move, it will always learn that move. And if the Pokemon already knows four moves, its first move will be forgotten, and the new move will be placed last. Well, except in Generation 1, that is. You couldn't leave a Pokemon in the Daycare if it knew an HM move already. And finally, let's get back to a little bit of music before we end this episode. Did you know that the Pokewalkers menu music in HeartGold and Soul Silver is a remix of the Game Boy Print's print screen music? Which actually marks that Jingle's first appearance back in the series in nearly a decade. Wow! Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Pokemon Feet. If you liked it, feel free to let me know with a like or a comment. Both of those are pretty freaking amazing. And if you think you could put up with me again, maybe even hit that subscribe button. I don't know, optional, but it'd be pretty cool. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this week. I hope you guys learned something, and I hope to see you next time on another episode of Pokemon Feet. Who's that Pokemon? Foot. Cubone! Cubone! Foot.